everybody, welcome back. Northern Lion plays the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth, plus 45 wins in a row. What, what can you say when you got the Elsa hairdo? 9PZYAG8D. Um, very great stats with one noted exception. Uh, our rate of fire is non-pliable. And I'm not talking about in like the toilet paper sense. It's it's not workable. You know, it's it's frozen peanut butter, it's cold molasses, it can't be worked with. Wonder if anybody's ever froze. I mean, I'm sure there's somebody has, but I wonder if there's like a, a reason to freeze peanut butter. When I was a kid, my mom used to make these like peanut butter squares. It's like peanut butter. I, I honestly don't know what was in it, but as with most baking that is enjoyed by children, um, I'm pretty sure that it was like peanut butter, butter, and marshmallows, and then brown sugar. But I gotta tell you, it it do be delicious though. Look, I'm I'm not a sweets guy at all, and I think there is the chance that if I ate them now, I would think that they are so sickly sweet compared to like the average stuff that I eat now. Not to say that I eat super healthy. I just you know my vice is uh, salty snacks and and breads and stuff like that, not uh, cookies. But uh, I I might not even enjoy them anymore. But as a child, man, I could eat like you know like a quarter of the batter in one sitting. But I don't even that. I don't think it required um, frozen peanut butter. I think you could just work with the the peanut butter that God gave you. Anyway, what am I talking about? I don't know. <laughs> We're moving on. Um, it is uh, today's Monday, September the fourteenth. Very low backlog, as I'm sure you've you've noticed from discussions in the past. Spelunky Two comes out for PlayStation Four tomorrow. I'm not. It's not a flex. I do have it early and I've been playing a little bit of it, but I did this is like not a situation where I got it insanely early. You know, for Spelunky 1's PC release, five people, me mouth, Bear Taffy, Red Panda Gamer and Man vs Game got it early and then all competed um, in daily challenges for 7 days. I feel like if we did that now in 2020, uh, people would revolt. How dare the streamers get access, or which is honestly pretty fair, <laughs> but uh, it's one thing for streamers to get access early to maybe like prepare content in the background, but uh, it's another thing altogether to be like, yeah, sure, you can go ahead and play it and reveal all the secrets in advance for everybody. That's that's more the kind of thing that would rub people the wrong way for certain. But anyway. I ha I've had it for like, you know, 24 hours, so I just managed to get my uh, my very first runs done. I'm very happy to have it in advance, for sure. Um, De Derek didn't have to do that, but I, I appreciate it a great deal. Especially because, you know, we're still in this position, of course, where at any given moment, um, you know, Kate could go into labor. So that, I, it, you know, I wasn't trying to lean on it like... Uh, you know, oh, please, Mr. Derek, you let me have it early because you never know every day could be my last. But there was an element of like, so like, you know, do whatever you want to do, Derek. Hey, it's, it's your game. It's your baby. You've been working on it for, I don't know, years and years and years at this point. But if you're going to think about giving some early access, I would love to be included. It's more like that. But yeah, and I got to tell you, I've been loving Spelunky uh, 2 so far. Oh, this is this is potentially great eats. I don't want to re. I don't know. Do, how does Sinvicta use the D12 chat? He's my. He's the meaning in my life. He's the inspiration. I want. I want to do better with the D12. I don't. I don't know if I've ever had the D12 pay out with anything useful. There. You know what? There you go. That streak has now ended. We got one penny out of it. Um, but yeah, uh, Spelunky 2. I don't know. So here's the thing. I didn't expect that Spelunky 2 would not be good. Ooh, baby. However, there was kind of like in the back of my mind, I was like, Spelunky 1 is so good and also like so elegant. Like it's kind of a perfect game. Um, or at least it's like... You know, I, I look at it almost as like the anti-Isaac. I've, I've talked about this before, but um, it's not to insult Isaac. I think Isaac does great just in a different way. 
Isaac is stuffed to the brim with like, you know, way more items than is necessary. So many bosses, you know, you get the idea. But Spelunky is a little bit more like, for the most part, what, what you see is what there is, you know? I think Slay the Spire is an even more extreme example, where it's like, we only put stuff in the game that makes sense. And fire breathing, but I heard that like a year and a half ago they buffed that, so I, I'm a little bit out of touch, I'll admit. But I'm out of my head when you're not around. Oh, I should have left all the coins on the ground, dude, so I could have used the D-Infinity. But, uh, or the D-20's Infinity. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Regardless, um... I, I, so I, I kind of thought, like, you know, what's the point of a Spelunky 2 when Spelunky 1 is, like, so perfect as is, you know? It's like, you know, remaking the Lord of the Rings trilogy or something like that, that Sinvicta and I have been talking about. It's like, it's already, it's already so good. It, it's contemporary just by virtue of how classic it is. Then I played Spelunky 2 and I was like, you know what? This is really good. <laughs> I, I'll reserve, like, final judgment because, I, I don't know, it's going to take at least dozens of hours, if not, um, you know, more than that. In order to determine, you know, way, the, the, the depth and the breadth of everything that's going on um, in the game. However, I'm... Uh, I wouldn't say pleasantly surprised, I'm just, you know, I'm happy that it seems great so far. Seems to really capture the spirit of the original, but also, like, it, it's very weird to go into a Spelunky situation and be like, I don't know what's happening. You know, to die on the first floor over and over feels like insane disappointment, until you remember how many times you died on the first floor over and over in Spelunky 1 before you knew what was happening, you know? It, it's done a great job so far of kind of recapturing that feeling of, of being like, you know, completely out of your depth. So, I'm playing a little Spelunky too. Very, very excited by that, um, obviously, as you might expect. Okay, that's what we're looking forward to. I don't think we should go to the Cursed Room yet. I think we should wait on that bad boy. Let's, let's do some of the little things right here. We do have seven keys already, which is pretty good. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much where we're at. Okay, um... We have nine, oh, we have eight heart containers. This above average. <laughs> I would trade, you know, this puts us in a very, like, old Isaac position, which is, uh, like, in the in the Flash version of the game, if you haven't played that, you know, no, not a surprise there. It has been, you know, like, seven years or six years since Rebirth came out. But um, yeah, there used to be, like, so much HP. You could get HP off the screen. Um, I'm actually going to try this. I, I do regret it, but... Um, you could get HP off the screen, like, super easily. And the deals with the devil were, like, the that was the, the currency of our time, you know? You needed to be able to get some kind of damage upgrade in most situations to be able to have a good chance to win, or win 800 times in a row. Nowadays, it depends. I, I think it, it's actually pretty varied now. Some days, uh, you need damage, some days you need HP, and certainly, like, needing HP has not been outside of the norm for us. So I will not re-roll this yet. But yeah, I mean, so I, I'm wary about even bringing this story up, because it might seem like I'm bringing it up as, like, a I almost died today, sort of like YouTuber clickbait. It's really not where it's coming from, and I also did not almost die. But, uh, Kate and I stepped out to go to the... This bakery today, get some breakfast to go, and we're masked up, and it's a very important part of the story, as you'll see. Um, as we were leaving the bakery, a van driving, oh no, driving by, uh, rolled down his window and shouted at us, at highway speed, more or less, so they were clearly very strong in their beliefs. Um, take your masks off, you freaks, which is just like, I honestly... I think that as a younger man, I, w I would have been very offended. It would have, it would have, I wouldn't say like rattled me. By the way, we are going to take a reroll here real quick. Oh, this, this seems pretty nice. I think we still should go to our curse room. We also have bombs now. Oh, this is good stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, as a younger man, I've told this story before. I, you know, I wouldn't say I've had altercations in Vancouver, but I've been yelled at before. <laughs> 
I've been I've been called names by unstable people on public transit for sure. You just you you learn to you know let it kind of roll off of you uh, pretty quickly. So I, if if their reaction was that I was gonna or they if what they thought was gonna happen was that I was gonna be intimidated and be like I don't want to wear my mask anymore because people might yell at me. You're dealing with the wrong customer, uh, Tony, wearing your Oakley sunglasses. Um, CEO of the School of Hard Knocks or whatever. Uh, I, I, I said it on Twitter already. A, a decade of anonymous online criticism has steeled me to the point where only the most uh, biting of personal barbs can actually do damage. The other thing is... I, look, I, I don't want to give you like an Are We the Baddies sort of Mitchell and Webb moment, except that's what I'm angling for specifically. But when, you, when your philosophy has you yelling out of a moving car at a woman who's nine months pregnant... I think it might be time to examine where you're at in your life. Hmm. It's tough because I like this run. I also do like Jar of Flies. So yeah, not not that you would expect us to not be fine. But in case you were like, how are you holding up after that vicious assault? Um, we're, we're doing fine. If anything, I just find it kind of humorous. And I, I hate to be this guy because he's very like holier than thou. But it just sort of like makes you sad. To be honest, not that, uh, and for the other reason, there's wildfire smoke everywhere. Um, so the mask is like, it's not just, uh, you know, a tyrannical government forcing me to wear a mask so I don't get other people sick like a sheep. It's more like, um, you know, also there's, you know, smoke particulate in the air. I don't know how much, admittedly, a mask would filter out, you know, airborne ash, but seems like it's a better safe than sorry situation. Um, I guess we should reroll. Um, because we want to maybe get to the, oh my god, the speed, dude. Um, yeah, because, like, I mean, the thing is, you know, you just, any, anytime you encounter a person like that, you kind of, I don't, I don't, I'm not a kill him with kindness guy. I'm like a, I'm like a overwhelm them with, you know, rapid fire rhetoric sort of guy. But in this case, I, for whatever reason, I almost take the opposite position where I'm like, man, your life must be so off of the rails. Like, I can't even imagine what would have to happen to me for me to be like, hey, 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 there's some people wearing a, there's a, <laughs> a openly pregnant woman wearing a mask. I'm going to yell at her. Like, you got to be, something's got to have gone terribly wrong. So I definitely am not like, oh, I feel bad for them. But I am like, man. But then, you know, I, look, I'm not saying that bad things happen to bad people because that's, that's not universally uh, true, obviously. But I'm like, maybe some of the bad stuff that happened to that guy in his life is a result of his attitude about stuff like this. And I, if you find yourself, hey, NL, you don't know him, that's not cool. He's only given me cause to know two things about him. He drives a van, and he uses that van to do drive-by yellings. If, if first impressions are important, this man needs to go to Toastmasters class, let me tell you that much. It's just, uh, you know... It's, it's been like a... Spelunky 2, amazing, you know? Everything else in our personal lives, like, is going real well right now. But, like, you know, on Friday and Saturday, wildfire smoke descended upon the city. And you're like, oh, that sucks. Um, and then, you know, you see people still, like, lining up in enormous lines of maskless crowds to get into brunch restaurants as if, like, you know, the pandemic's over and then you're like okay well it's a little weird and then also like then on sunday there was like an enormous i know this is going to sound weird there was an enormous underwater fire just outside of vancouver in the city of new westminster and you know you're like all right that seems bad and then there was like an enormous train derailment oh my god my deal with the devil dude just outside of vancouver that looked like something out of freaking skyfall and you're like this stuff doesn't like affect you direct well the smoke and the pandemic sure affect directly and indirectly i suppose but um you know the other stuff doesn't affect you that much but you're like could you just have like i just need like a like a news day that is like a cute kitten there's a cat beauty pageant happening over in uh Lonsdale Key tonight. I'd be like, oh, I'm not gonna go because I mean obviously, but at the same time I'll look at photos from that little cat beauty parlor their cat uh, beauty pageant. They'll be like, the beauty pageant owner has been arrested for tax fraud. You'd be like, oh, come on. Come on.
You know, I would probably still watch the beauty pageant. I'm not saying I condone it, but I'm saying that's more between, like, him and the government. It's not really, like, I'm not gonna say it's not my business, but it's like, you know, I can still enjoy, I can separate the art from the artist, I think, on that. But I understand not everybody's gonna agree with that one. Um, okay, we should be re-rolling faster. That's, I, I'm definitely making a major mistake with slow re-rolls here. Um, because we should be trying to get to uh, the D100 as soon as possible again to get to an overpowered run. This right, it should be like an easy win. So, I mean, it just mostly because of the D Infinity. Everything else is kind of gravy. So, yeah, we're, I mean, we're totally fine. We're not sweating it. Um, and I, I mean, like, I just feel like you always lose the argument <laughs> if you and i'm not this is not just me trying to make myself feel better it's just like if you're yelling at people from your car then like you probably have lost the argument there are exceptions i think like if you're like watching uh you know a vicious assault take place while you're driving by and you roll down your window and go hey stop hitting that guy look i'll give you some of the moral high ground in that situation but if you're just like you know Hidden strangers constantly with like whatever passing thought enters into your cerebral cortex that is completely ignorant. I think you've already lost in the marketplace of ideas. That's that's just my two cents on that one, um, dude. Holy mantle! But we are gonna re-roll it. My my one exception to that rule, I don't see a need to re-roll if we get an orbital in the next uh, one room. A little spooked. A little spooked. Okay, we have handled that room. Dare I say it? It's been a long time since anybody mentioned these words, but I think we handled that room like a boss, quite frankly. Pooped on Deborah's desk like a boss. <laughs> Remember that? Remember when like a boss was everywhere? Well, this is still pretty... I, I hate getting rid of Holy Mantle, obviously, but like... Trying to keep Epiphora going here. Yeah, really good idea to lose your deal with the Devil Chance completely. So anyway, that's, that's you know, it, it kind of, it's been a misanthropic sort of week. Like, again, on, on a personal level, we're doing completely fine. But, like, on a, <laughs> on, like, a, a, a municipal level, I'm like, uh, and I don't even think it's, like, a Vancouver thing, necessarily. Although I do, you know... I, I do have to admit, this city has a unique brand, uh, blend. He said the word wrong. He was trying to make a point, and then he said the word wrong. <laughs> I kind of look at it as like a like a mad... Vancouver is kind of like if you had um, Los Angeles mixed with Portland. By which I mean there's a lot of like... Like a ton of vanity and like narcissism. But also combined with like... The elements of like hipster culture and, and and hippie culture for that matter, and I don't even mean that in like a negative way, because you 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 get the worst of both worlds or you get the best of both worlds. You know, we got amazing like restaurant uh, and and coffee shop culture, microbrew culture, stuff like that. People respect the great outdoors. You know, culturally, I'm pretty in line with like most of the people that live here. But you do also get you know some insanity from time to time. That, what what a shot, really. Kind of just, like, I'm, I'm happy where we're at, but I will admit, I was like, maybe we could go live in the woods. Just for a bit. Just for, like, a couple, just for a couple months. It's probably not the best timing. Yera, Blank Rune. We could have yera the Blank Rune, but it, it, that sort of thing isn't my bag, baby. What I would like, you know what, I'm actually going to do it, like this as well. I don't know if there was a... Ah, there's probably a better way to do that. I think we could have placed one bomb and done that instead. We want to use the D1... Oh, we can't even get into our secret room, so never mind. Well, D100 right here. Um, I feel... Oh, I didn't mean to go in yet. I feel like our stats got much, much better. We do have Hive Mind. We got Humbling Bundle. We got Nun's Habit. Not really, oh, we got the compass as well. Not really comfortable just kind of like leaving. Like not, not taking the D-Infinity further. I think the D-Infinity is still going to be uh, pretty litty. But we'll, we'll see. That's not really what we're looking for. But you know what? We're about to get the D6. 
I don't I don't think this is the kind of run we want to build a run around necessarily if we have unlimited choice. If we had limited choice, this would be very swell for sure though. So I'm I'm really very thankful we got so many um HP ups in the early game because it's going to give us a lot of time to I mean I'll, I'll be honest with you our base level stats and everything but HP are not that amazing so this is really a run where I feel like I'm just kind of fishing for uh, like Ipecac uh, we can hold a battery charge for a minute so or maybe we can't anymore so we should use it yeah um, we're fishing for like Ipecac, Epic Fetus, Dr. Fetus something along those lines just to just to simplify our own equation here I want them both going low level but yeah so it's you know it's always an eventful time for sure in terms of uh, oh mom transformation and chaos and another stars card um we'll just keep re-rolling for now again we're trying to get through as soon as possible we want to make sure we're getting good stuff in terms of uh you know being yelled at in in Vancouver, this this is one where I was like, this is more like. I I would say in terms of like how much this this peaked my adrenaline, it was like a two out of ten. By the time it had happened, you know, it was already over, which I guess is kind of an obvious sentence. But yo, okay, here we go. We got spun. We got the ability to fly. We could start to think about this. And I always caution against, because people will say things like, well, it seems like it kind of bothered you because you're still talking about it. And I'm like, well, you know, it's not like when I'm done talking about it, I can just be like, hey, you know, that's the episode. You know, when you get on it, when you're talking to yourself for 35 uh, minutes straight, you know, you got to kind of milk it for all you got is what I'm going to say. You know, the average person, if I ask them to talk about something that they're passionate about for like, five minutes without cue cards or preparing a speech, they would lose their freaking minds. We're out here trying to, you know, get blood from a stone. Got no anecdotes in the middle of, you know, the pandemic. Finally, I got an anecdote because somebody yelled at me. I'm, I'm overjoyed. <laughs> okay, we want the overjoyed is not the right word. Elated? Yeah, maybe that's it. Um... Okay, depths one. Very slow, but again, like the run is is totally set. Uh, we just gotta we just gotta guide it. This one's a little weird because like it's actually really good, but I think we want to. I think we indeed do want to take the reroll. Main reason behind it is because we're still fishing for like one of the gimme items. Um, Yera. Blank rune. Okay, this time let's learn from our mistake. I'll Yera the blank rune. We'll take one blank rune. That's Ansus. That's Awaz, and it gave us another blank rune. Uh, I guess we should save this, and maybe it'll be like a... Well, I mean, a useful rune. <laughs> different runes can be useful in different contexts. This Bercano. Okay. Anyway, so that was the day. Almost went down the, the pipe there. That would have been pretty bad. I feel like our, our life would be better if we could stop uh, losing the Devil Deal chances. So that's that's on my list. I'll, I'll acknowledge I don't think I've had the best uh, play up to this point. Hither to this point so far. Um, anyway, yeah. What do we got going on this week? It's going to be another busy week, you know, as... Uh, you know, with Spelunky 2, there's going to be a lot of Spelunky 2 recording. It really is like one of those... It's not even like a once-a-year gaming event for for me and like other people that are into Spelunky. Like, for the purposes of my channel, Spelunky 2 is not the biggest release. Let's start getting this going then. Um, but it's definitely... Like, the biggest release is one tier. And the tier within that tier literally only includes Isaac, you know? So new Isaac DLC is always going to be in that tier 1. Let's, let's even call it tier zero, because I think that's like, it's so far heads and tails above everything else right now. Um, but then Spelunky is definitely like it, near the top of the tier two category. Let me just see what we got here. Not that impressed. Polyphemus. Oh my god, but our rate of fire. Oh, but it's Tech X. Okay, so that we can shoot it whenever. So this might be where we stop, even though it'll be much to the chagrin of, uh, of a lot of people out there. Um, 
we could really still use a tears upgrade. We we can't spam it. We we still have to charge it like an extra couple of, eh, maybe not a couple of seconds. We got to charge it a little before we send it out there. So a, a little fire rate increase would help out a great deal. So yeah, it's it's going to be a big deal for sure. Um, I'm excited. I, ho I hope people uh, watch some Spelunky. I hope I can solve some mysteries before I got to go for a bit. <laughs> but it really is, uh, you know, you know, it's like, you know, what, what am I going to do? Am I going to spend time with my uh, infant daughter around the period of her birth? But that, you know, we'll never go back to. Um, unless we build like a time machine or something like that or are we gonna play a little uh, video game i mean to be fair it's a video game we've been looking forward to a lot don't get me wrong but on the other hand anyway now if if repentance came out we'd have to <laughs> i'd have to modify my schedule might be going genuinely completely sleepless for a little while but luckily luckily ed said repentance is only 85 percent done so I should have a little period before I was trying to run the numbers. Um, and I was like, 85% done. I think they've been working on it for like three years. So what's 15% of three years? It's like, you know, four and a half months. Then I was, I, I caught myself and I was like, why are you doing the math? You know, and this is not an insult to Ed at all. But you know, like somebody asked the question and he just, you know, thought about it and was like, eh, you know. <laughs> Seems like about 85%, and you never know, that last 15, you know, could be almost nothing, or it could be the same, you know, rate at, as the other work has been done, or it could take, you know, another year and a half, two years, who knows. I'm, I'm definitely, I'm at a point in my life, I'm not, you know, I'll make, I'll make the odd joke about the DLC taking a long time, but I'm not like, uh, you know, actually concerned about it, you know, it comes out when it comes out. If anything, I find myself in the strange position of being like, delay it. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, it's not all bad. You know, it's not all getting yelled at on the sidewalk for following uh, public health protocols. You, you got me trying to reroll here, dude. And by you, I mean me. And my, my brain's just broken. It's like, this isn't good enough. What are you talking about? You got Polyphemus Tech X. It's good enough. The world is wide enough for Polyphemus and Tech X. Oh, but then we got Betrayal. It's like barely even worth... I'm not going to hit it. I'm not going to hit it. Especially because we're actually going to get our first deal with the devil in a moment. <laughs> and I'll be honest, we deserve for it to be one of those like four red chest all troll bomb deals with the devil. We have, we have not put in an inspired performance so far today. I am content to let the game carry me. Which is, a, you know, not something we can rely on every day. Not necessarily a bad habit, but not something you can rely on every day. Um, I mean, to, to be honest with you, that removes the temptation. Oh, it also gave us Beelzebub, which I don't know if it does. It does some fly stuff for us, right? Don't really need the bombs, honestly. Is it, maybe it's the right play, but... So I, I will pay 15 cents to smelt a single trinket, because I'm a sucker. And then I, th I always love, like, the one potato peeler usage. You, we could definitely get more, don't get me wrong. But I feel like one is, like, the optimum setup there. And I think we will use Mama Mega real quick. And then we'll take this with us. We were actually... We got exactly what we were hoping for. It's a fool card, which means we may indeed... We, Mama Mega lets us get into Boss Rush. And then we can get out of Boss Rush using this fool card, so... And our, our flies are doing a lot of damage. I gotta admit, it's, for having the D-Infinity, which is a zany item, it's a little bit of a non-zany um, approach. I guess we do want bookworms, so... Well, we're not quite there yet. But yeah, I mean, apart from, apart from the direct verbal... Uh, Attacks. <laughs> it's been a good time, honestly. I've been having, I've been having a lot of fun. We, I, you know what? I think we do want a thing. We definitely don't. <laughs> oh, my Come on, man. Why would you do that? 
Um, so that's that's just uh, honestly a mechanic I forgot. If boss rush is open via that mechanic and you go into another room, you lose it. In fact, I think you might lose it no matter what. Like, even if you have the time, I think if you go into a deal with the devil, you lose it. Whatever, dude. I mean, come on, this one's... It's in the books. Take a look, it's in the books. Reading, streak, win. Didn't get up to too much this weekend. I, you probably, if you watch a lot of content, you're probably sick of hearing about it, but I watched um, Rocky IV again. It was on television. Um, I've seen Rocky IV a few times in my life. Watching, I, I think Rocky IV is a very watchable movie. I would really recommend it if, you, um, if, if you're in on the joke, if that makes sense. I don't know if the filmmakers were in on the joke for the record, but um, essentially Rocky IV is a movie where, um, like Rocky I is played straight. It's a great movie. Genuinely great movie. Rocky II, it's been a long time, um, but I remember it, you know, playing it pretty straight, but not really being particularly great. And then Rocky III is kind of like the same. Rocky IV, they went full into like, you know, Rocky Cinematic Universe territory, but in its own weird way, it makes it like kind of amazing. That was a really good item pickup, by the way. So essentially, um, the plot of Rocky IV is that Rocky is the current heavyweight champion of the world. Um, his old nemesis, but now a uh, friend and, and mentor, Apollo Creed, is struggling with uh, the fact that he's retired now. Um, played by Carl Weathers, obviously. Uh, he's retired now, uh, and he's he, he misses the thrill of being in the ring. You know, there's shots of him being, like, bored in his mansion and being like... Look, and I'm not saying it's unrelatable. I'm just saying, you know, you, you, you kind of get where he's coming from, but also you're like, shut up, dummy. You got, like, a trillion dollars. Just just chill out in your in your mansion with your beautiful family and your pool. I mean, he's so rich, he has a TV out by his pool. And the movie was made in 1986, so we're talking about, like, he, he must have been pulling in outrageous money. But anyway, there's this new kid out of uh, the USSR named Ivan Drago, played by Dolph Lundgren. Six foot nine, 300 pounds of pure muscle, right? It's out of control. Apollo Creed says... You know, this is a way for me to get back into the limelight. I'm going to, you know, box this kid who's undefeated in amateur boxing. I'm going to teach him a lesson from the pros. And then he, I got to say, you know, everybody goes, hey, Apollo, you don't have to do this. You know, you already, you're at the top of the mountain. Think of what you got to lose. And he goes, you don't understand, Stallion. You're still at the top. Anyway, so Apollo Creed predictably uh, kills him in the ring and then says, if he dies, he dies. And, um... Then Rocky uh, goes on to have an unsanctioned fight with uh, Ivan Drago in the USSR. And I'll spoil the movie for you. Despite it making no sense whatsoever, um, the, the crowd, which starts, of course, cheering for Drago. Drago, Drago. After, like, round six or seven, they are overwhelmed by Rocky Balboa's indomitable spirit. Even though he's get, getting his face turned into ground beef, they start going, Rocky, Rocky. And then... You know, the mask slips off Drago. He goes, I fight for me, <laughs> not you. Anyway, it, it ends with Rocky Balboa knocking Drago out, which, you know, I'm not saying Stallone's not in amazing shape in the movie, but looking at the two men is kind of like inconceivable. Um, and then he gives a speech that is so good. It actually, and I, this is not an exaggeration. It gets Mikhail Gorbachev, the the uh, Secretary General of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Um, it gets him to give Rocky Balboa a standing ovation. Like, he actually tears down the Iron Curtain by the power of his speech. What does he say in this speech? I'm going to paraphrase, but it's going to be pretty close. I can already tell you. Something like, you know what I got here? I didn't know what to think. You guys didn't like me very much, so uh, I suppose I didn't like you that much either. Then, I realized we're all the same. And if, if I could change, and you could change, everybody could change. And then that's where Gorbachev stands up and claps. Um, so I would really, um, I would recommend it, even though I've just spoiled the entire film. 
Like, it's really more of about the, it's about the journey as opposed to the destination in Rocky IV. And the journey is several montages, including one where, while training in Russia, um, Rocky runs so fast slash well, he, he causes a KGB surveillance car that's tailing him to ski off of the road, and then two guys get out clutching their hats, going, hey, Rocky! And then he runs up the mountain, and when he gets to the top of the mountain, it's just an iconic movie scene. He holds his arms out and gets on his knees and goes, Drago! Anyway, I really recommend it. But I will say, I watching the movie in... in 2020? Sorry, I forgot what year it was. There hasn't been that much going on this year. Um, watching the movie in 2020 feels a little weird. Because like when I, when I watched it the first time, I was like, ah, it's cheesy American propaganda. But, you know, it's kind of fun or whatever. Watching it now, I'm like, look, I'm not saying Apollo Creed deserved to die in Rocky IV. But he was being a big jerk. At, at the press conference, he was saying stuff, you know, like he was, he was being real ignorant. And treating the the Soviet entourage like you know, they they were beneath him. And then Ivan Drago's wife, who was also like his publicist, says like, "We know Drago's gonna win." And Creed reacts in such a way that is like, "How could you say that? I thought we were having a sportsman's contest, and you said you're gonna beat me." Anyway. And the other thing is, is, is Ivan Drago a villain? Yeah, he's sort of villainous. Um, but on the other hand, like, he doesn't murder Apollo Creed with a gun. It's a boxing match. He engages in some underhanded tactics. I'm not going to deny it. All I'm saying is, you know, I don't think I don't think a charge of murder would hold up in court. Anyway, for now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!